Hi guys, the other day I made a video about polytonality and composing and orchestrating music with it. And it didn't do very well on YouTube, unfortunately, but it did really well on my website. And a lot of you have emailed me and asked me what books that I use for composition in this 20th century format. So I've made this video just to go through some of the books, well, the top five that I use. Just before we start, I have to say that all of these books do not have any guitar tablature or anything like that. And also some of them are quite expensive, so it's a good idea if you were interested is to take them out of a library. Okay, at number five, I've got The Technique of My Musical Language by Olivier Messiaen. Although I have this book at number five, it could also be book number one, because for me, this is the most inspirational book that I have, or that I've ever seen. Uh, more inspirational than jazz or any of that, because this goes into music and opens your mind up to what's possible, not just harmonically, but rhythmically. I mean, the rhythmic language in here just blows my mind because just by adding a dot to a note, you can suddenly create a whole different rhythmic language. It's super extraordinary if you're you know, a serious composer and you want to do something new with music. I mean, rhythm is what sets different musics apart. Like rock and roll is different from jazz. Jazz is different from classical. Classical is different from punk. They're all different. And it's the rhythm that determines their difference. Yes, the harmony does, but it's the rhythm first of all, that's the root of it. Although Messian uses these rhythms, he's actually taken them because they're actually Hindu rhythms. And if you're in music today, I mean, I love Shakti and I love um, Conical and everything, but it's become a bit of a cliche now where everybody's doing it and it's not kind of um, new anymore. But when I look at these rhythms, boom, suddenly there's lots of newness to be had in music again and to re-establish what's available and what you can develop or what you can develop um, with rhythm rather than just following the cliches. And it's the old days when I was growing up, um, originality was everything in music. With the internet, it's become the opposite, where everybody wants to copy to get views. Nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. But the great composers were original. Chopin had an originality. Boulez, he has an originality. Beethoven, Mozart, Bach, they're original. Um, even when I was growing up, David Bowie, Elton John, that was very original in its day. You know, Prince, that was very original. And the production, that sort of thing. So originality is the key thing that I look for in music. I don't care about cliches. I'm not interested in them. I need new things. And the rhythms in here, on their own are new and give me lots and lots of ideas and it's interesting because he talks about different ways to conduct you know with an orchestra these rhythms also we have the harmonic concept with the use of his modes of limited transposition and so he uses bitonality and polytonality within his own harmonic concept at number four we have adam neely's favorite book and it's this, 20th Century Harmony by Vincent Persichetti. And John McLaughlin uses this book as well, incidentally. And when you see Adam Neely videos, this is always in the background. I don't know why. He always has it in the background on a stand. This book sort of serves as a really good all-rounder book and covers all bases. This book generally looks at things like intervals, chords, building chords, multi-chords, and multi-scales as well. The multi-scales is really interesting in here, along with mirror harmony. And this book covers those subjects really well. There is some 12 tone, but there's only a small really um, amount. It doesn't really go into it in great depth or great detail, but it's still really useful. This is the musical language of Pierre Boulez, writings and compositions. It's a Cambridge edition, um, but it goes into great detail in Boulez's compositional method. Really what his style within this book is comprised of is opposites. In a sense, that's sort of what his style is, because people will hear something and they'll say, well, he's just making this up as he goes along, or he's just playing anything, or it's just a noise or there's no structure. The irony to this is, is that it's really unbelievably structured. 
He will have a long augmented phrase followed by its opposite in diminution. But also within this, there will be things like retrograde motion and transposition. So the way that he uses and exploits these compositional devices is really, really illuminating because then you can start to hear the music um, with clarity. And then you get ideas from that, and then you can make your own ideas from that, especially this augmentation and diminution. Also, Boulez does take a lot of ideas from his teacher, Olivier Messiaen. So those ideas come through as well, again, especially in terms of rhythm. So this book is a highly complex book. It's not a book I would advise anybody to buy or to read unless you're really serious about, you know, 20th century classical music and you want to write for an orchestra. It is super intellectual, but at the same time, it opens new pathways to do new things and to compose really new and interesting material. At number two, we have this book here. And this is Anthology of 20th Century Music, edited by Robert P. Morgan. What this book is, is a collection of works and then musical analysis. So this book takes selected works from many composers like Stravinsky, Webern, Berg, um, Schoenberg, Scribian, Debussy, Charles Ives, Bartok, Peter Maxwell Davis, and there's huge amounts of analysis. The analysis of these works is useful because you can take it off the page and then apply it to your own ideas or your own compositions. As an example, there's a great analysis in here of Berg's lyric suite. And this is what I really like, is I can just take something from here and something new will be composed. And it's inspirational composition as well, it inspires me, which is really important when I have a book, I wanna be inspired by it. There's also a great Stockhausen um, analysis in here, which for me opens up lots and lots of doors and makes me listen and hear things in a new way that perhaps I wouldn't do otherwise. For instance, you might just play one bar, but that one bar might set off 20 other bars of music because you get ideas about the intervals, how to exploit these intervals, how to copy the intervals, transpose, how to use um, retrograde, and you exploit them manipulate them and then create material from the material. At number one, I have this book here, Music Lessons by Pierre Boulez. And this has no musical examples, but what it is are essays of his lectures on music. So this is much more about understanding music and what music actually is and our role or our parts that we play in it. For many people, especially when you come into sort of popular culture, it's always about the person. But in reality, music is about the material and it's the material from the material from the material and it's that organic process. Because from the material, you'll find your own individual self, your own individual voice, your own individual way of working, your own individual way of how you understand music. It's a bit like opening up your head and looking into your own brain and seeing the various pathways and then seeing the completion of them, as opposed to just guessing and just trying and not getting anywhere with music. So from this material, it's us coming through the material, as opposed to it's about me and some material that I've made. It's more about the material itself that defines us and speaks our own unique voice, or we find this voice through the material. And this is really, really important because you can then define and have clarity about what you're composing, what you're about, why you're doing it, and what you need to do, how to be prolific in order to keep doing it, and how to sound in the way that is different from other people's sound. It's no good copying Beethoven or copying Bullez or copying something like that. And it's the same with improvising. It's you're trying to find a new way of doing it and speak your own individual voice. If you just sound like Charlie Parker, that's great, but people will say, you just sound like Charlie Parker. You have to find your own voice, but it's through the music itself that you find it. And it's extremely revealing, difficult to come to terms with in the beginning, 
because you're going to have to create material that's not very good before the good material actually comes to the surface or the cream rises to the top. And if you can see that and comprehend it, um, both in your practical playing and your own thoughts, your own thought process, your own intellectual understanding, then the music comes together a lot quicker. I mean, I only read a few pages at a time of this book now because I like to actually ponder on what I've thought about whilst I'm reading this and about what it's actually saying and how it relates to me and what I'm actually doing. So I'll just ponder on this for a few days and suddenly get illuminated by something that I would never have thought of before. I mean, even with this channel, there's about 630 videos. I've taken off about 300, but I've made that amount of videos. Would I have made those videos if I hadn't read this book? The answer is no, I would have stopped about 150 videos in. But when you can see the way, even if it's not that good what you're doing, you can see the way forward. And it's through the actual material, whether in this case video, there's a bit of music in there, you can see how to move forward. Otherwise you'll just get to a point and you'll just stop. And that's what happens in music. A lot of people don't see the material, they see themselves. And I've known, like I say, people that have, you know, been born with talent. They're actually gifted with talent. And people will say, why didn't that great clarinetist become a concert clarinetist, or that great violinist become a concert violinist, or that great jazz saxophonist become a great saxophonist? It's because they just don't finish or see or understand the pathways, and they get caught up in all of the distractions around them and don't see the material. And it's the material itself that's important. Lastly in this book, which is the other side of music, is structure. And that's another subject in itself. And that's something that, again, without structure, I would have never done anything in music. But this is much more about understanding music, the process, and oneself. But unless you've got somebody like Boulez to clarify these things, it's very easy in music to get lost. And I would have got lost a long time ago if I hadn't had that. So, yeah, this is my number one book. Anyway, if this video was of any use to you, then please smash the subscribe button because that really does help keep the channel going and smash the like button because that helps with the algorithm. Click the notification button if you like the video and write a comment if you want. And I'll see you all in the next video. And thank you for watching.